Today is a really special day because a little more than two years and 11 months ago, I walked out of prison. And today I do my final probation check-in. We use this app, it used to be called Shadow Track, now it's called the Neroli app. So I'm gonna go through the process and show you what I have to do to check in for the very first time before I'm free as an adult in the world. So I hit self-report and it'll say, please ensure there's no background noise uh, and complete the voice verification. So basically I have to do a voice or a facial recognition verification to show that I'm me. Hopefully there's not a lot of noise and I can do it. And the phrases they pick are really weird. Today is a nice day to go for a walk. Am I gonna do another one? I agree to the conditions of the program. Verification complete. I am who they say I am, or I am who I say I am. Now we get to the list of questions. Um, this has always been so weird to me that just the fact that we do it this way, I mean, I guess it makes sense because they did a bunch of research and they found that people who were low risk, I can't remember exactly what the qualifications were, um, had like a less than a 5% chance of recidivating or even having a technical violation. So it wasn't worth their time to have them come into the office and it made more sense to do this. Uh, my first question, has your address or phone number changed since your last interview? No. I haven't moved, I have the same phone number. Do I still owe court costs and fines? So one of the first things I did when I got out of prison was pay off my court costs and fines. I owed about, I think $5,000. And my thinking was before I, I, I didn't realize that it would take the whole three years to get off probation because a lot of times people can get off early, but the way my conditional pardon is written, I have to do the entire three years of supervised release. So there was no way to do it. But the other thing it did is it allowed me to build credit. I had somebody co-sign for me. I came and took a small loan out of the bank, paid off the money for my court costs and fines, and then I owed the bank. So I was paying interest, but I would have been paying interest on the court costs and fines. And additionally, I was building credit because they report to the credit agencies, whereas the courts don't. Have you been charged with a criminal or traffic offense since your last interview? Uh, no, I haven't. No criminal or traffic offense. Uh, I haven't been pulled over since I got out of prison, which surprised me. Um, I, I don't drive crazy or anything, but I just, I always assume there'd be some kind of contact, but yeah, I haven't had really any police contact other than when I wrecked the motorcycle, which yeah, is not the best kind of police contact. Am I currently employed? Yes, I'm currently employed. Has there been any changes in your employment since, since your last interview? Nope. I still run the nonprofit, work for myself, and sometimes work at Common House, the restaurant and social club that I love so much. Have you consumed any illegal drugs since your last interview? Uh, and it's funny, so I had a buddy, they asked this every time, <clears throat> and he wanted to see what would happen if he said yes. And I think it asked him for more details. He just said, oh, something. Anyways, they didn't do anything. Like there was no response to him saying, yes, I consumed illegal drugs. So again, I guess I just figure people are low risk. It's just not really worth because they have, uh, they have cases where they have to invest a lot of time and energy. So it's better or easier for them to just not worry about other people. Have I been prescribed any new medication since your last interview? No, uh, I don't take any medication. The only thing I, I took was when I had the motorcycle accident. I had a uh, muscle relaxer and some like small, basically like Tylenol type pain thing. Uh, do I still owe restitution? Nope, thankfully no. Do I have health insurance? Yes, I do. Uh, and they always ask this, is your insurance private or government? And I don't know why that, that matters or why they ask that, but uh, when I first got out, I didn't realize this, but we started doing the Medicaid sign up to where everybody getting out of prison is on or is at least eligible for Medicaid for a first year. And then I think you're eligible, like if you're eligible day one of a year, even if you start making money, you're eligible for the rest of that year. But I didn't know that. So halfway through my first whole year out, I actually switched and got private insurance. And I kind of wish I hadn't just because God, it's expensive. Like I look at that bill coming out of my account every month and it's a lot of money. You know, when I had the accident, I'm still paying off what thirty thousand dollars in medical debt because I think they paid for just a couple. So it, it didn't it didn't cover everything I thought I was going to cover, but I have to have it, and it's it's a mixed bag because I get the idea of saying, oh, I don't want to deal with this, I don't want to have to cover it, but it's also you know I, I have to be in network, and I'm supposed to get a free physical every year. I've been waiting since January for a physical. Like I I signed up, I actually had a date from the year before, and I had to move it because we had a conference. But since January, I haven't been able to get a date for a physical. So it's it's just the healthcare kind of fiasco that I think everybody deals with. And now uh, you have completed the interview successfully. And this was my last probation interview. And that, sometimes people will say, no, you're on parole. No, you're on probation. So technically what I am, according to the conditional pardon, is on a period of three years of supervised release under the probation, or excuse me, under the parole board. So like, what does that mean? Because we don't have parole in Virginia. We abolished parole in 1995, but we still have a parole board for all the people sentenced before there or the people who were sentenced when they were juveniles who were there eligible. But basically it just means probation and parole are the same thing. We have probation and parole officers. We have the op office of probation. It's just done by district. Like I'm in district nine, but it's the same process, the same experience. Under parole, they could like send somebody back for their suspended time under probation. They can also send them back for the suspended time, but in a different way. But basically the conditions are exactly the same. But now I'm done. August 16th, next month, like less than 30 days away, I'll be done. That's my three year mark. That's the three years that I had to complete to get off probation. And I'll be free for the first time. And I don't, 
really completely know what to do with that. Because part of me wants to go just like travel and see the world and do stuff. And I've been able to travel a lot. Like they've always approved my travel. There have sometimes been complications about like, you have to come back from this place before you go to this place. And it just, it wasn't tenable because I can't afford the flights because, you know, when I'm sponsored, it's one thing, but all this stuff is paid out of pocket. Like we haven't paid for any travel with the nonprofit fund. So it's, it's not the easiest thing to manage, but now I'll be able to just get in the car and go. And we do the local juvenile events that are really important to me. We had a huge one yesterday. We got a bunch of news coverage. We got a bunch of organizations in there. We got the families of the kids. It was awesome. Like it was, there's not often that I, a time that I really feel proud of what I'm doing that day, everybody in there, I felt really proud of what I've been doing. I was like, man, this, this is awesome. And I don't know that I could leave that behind, or I don't know what it would look like to leave that behind. I would definitely need to make sure there is somebody continuing the work that I've been doing and, and having a system that can kind of exist far beyond, you know, when I'm gone or when something changes with me. But Otherwise, yeah, I want to go see the world. I want to go do things. But it's also kind of scary because it's like moving out of the house and then moving across the country and then moving whatever. But I've also realized in the last couple of weeks, um, I feel like my my social connections here locally have changed a lot. Somebody that I'm really close to from the past is probably moving, probably getting an amazing job. And OK, so that's like a major person in my life that's going to be gone. And then I, I hurt my shoulder. I messed it up really bad. And I haven't been able to go to jujitsu. And that was another social group that I really like. And I have a friend that uh, I consider one of my rock people, but she's started dating and it's this really serious relationship. She's in a PhD program, so she's really busy and I don't get to see her nearly as often. Like we don't have as much fun. And so I was like, man, I kind of feel like my circle's like, like drawing in and I can meet new people. Like yesterday, actually, I had a meeting with somebody who was extraordinary and I was like, I want to be your friend. Can we just be friends? Um, but I don't know that that makes sense to, to stay here for one person or one arrangement. I think it's time to just go see the world. But it's also scary because I haven't done that. I haven't been free as an adult in the world ever. I haven't actually been able to just get up and make my own decisions. And I think there's some like little kid part of me that's still scared, it's still not sure what to do or where to go or what it looks like. And I mean, it's the same thing as getting out of prison. The struggles that I had getting out, not being able to make decisions, like staring at the body wash aisle because I don't know how to choose between all the options and having choice paralysis or my buddy, when I picked him up from prison, taking him to breakfast that morning. And I was like, hey man, what do you want for breakfast? And he just like sat there kind of shaking and didn't know what to do because it's hard to do. I mean, making our own decisions, being out on our own, not having somebody kind of hold our hands is a difficult thing. And that's one of the big problems we have with prison. We stick people in environments to teach them to be dependent. Don't teach them to be, you know, take the initiative. Don't teach them to be kind of leaders and thought, you know, we tell them to take orders and then we take them out of prison and stop giving them orders and wonder why they struggle. And we could have a transitional system where people maybe need that in the beginning. They need that structure. And then they move down and they go to a lower security facility and then to a work release facility and then to a halfway house. That would slowly transition people into making their own decisions and being responsible for themselves as they show that they're capable of that, as they show they're capable of acting responsibly. But we don't do that because the prison system doesn't make any sense. It doesn't actually make people safer, except possibly during the period that somebody is locked up. But 95% of the people in prison are going to be getting out one day. So we're just kind of temporarily holding on to this rather than saying, hey, let's actually address the things that got you there in the first place. Or let's give you the tools and the skills you need to succeed when you get out. And hey, maybe contribute to the people in the community around you. But that's not what we do. Again, because prison just doesn't make sense. I'm really excited because this was the uh, second to last step on this journey for me. I mean, the last step will just be making it to that day and being done. Uh, and I was really grateful that the restaurant people said last night that they wanted to throw a party for me. And that just like, that really touched me, man. That was, that was really special. I'm excited. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm a little bit manic. I have a whole lot of work to do, but I just wanted to share this because it's a really special moment. So thank you.